The inspiration for my TEDx talk starts with a little girl. She's almost two years old and she's completely oblivious to gender stereotypes, unaware of society's view on which jobs are for boys and which jobs are for girls. And she certainly hasn't heard of gender diversity. She is, however, absolutely insistent that she wants to be a policeman and loves wearing her policeman's hat. She didn't go on to join the police, but she did have a career in roles that are enormously male dominated. And that little girl was me back in 1972. Now, if we fast forward to 2020 and consider what meaningful change we've seen in gender stereotyping, almost five decades have passed and yet so much in a way seems the same. We are still finding it tough to break gender stereotypes and roles and make change in workplace gender diversity. We know it's tough to make change in this area, especially as gender stereotypes are embedded from such an early age. So perhaps not at the age of two, but if we look at the OECD research um, for boys and girls as young as 15, there's a vast difference in the career aspirations of these young people. They looked at the difference between aspiration and performance by gender in 15-year-old maths and science students globally. Now, these students are the top performers on the planet in these subjects. So there's no question of ability here from these students. But the girls only see science and maths as a future career route in less than 7% of countries compared to the boys. So why is that? As you've heard, I was keen to be a policeman age two and already had the hat. Now the OECD looked more generally at what 15 year olds want to be when they grow up. And being a policeman for a female is very unusual according to their research. It shows that females have a strong expectation to move into a career that's in the caring, medical or teaching professions. And business, or indeed any form of commercial role, simply does not feature in their top 10. So how does this type of early gender stereotyping manifest itself in the business gender mix that we see uh, today in the world? Well, you may remember that it was reported in the press just last year that there are more CEOs in the FTSE 100 called Steve then there are female CEOs. Now that's an amusing headline perhaps, but it also begs a really serious question. Why are we not more gender balanced in the 21st century? We looked to a report by the consultancy firm Grant Thornton published again last year in 2019. This drew from almost 5,000 interviews in businesses across 35 countries. And that report stated that women still find it easier to progress in certain roles. So what do they mean by these certain roles? Well, their report shows that human resources by far outweighs all other leadership positions for women in business. That might not be a surprise to you. 43% of all chief HR officers are women, according to their report. However, and this is a really important point. However, even in this function, women are vastly underrepresented at senior levels, as women actually make up 77% of all roles in the HR function. So to only have 43% at the senior levels is significantly underrepresenting them. And the figures are even more stark when we consider the roles of sales director and managing director in this research where here the proportion of women in these roles sits at just 17% and 15% respectively. Really low figures. And these are two commercial positions that I have personally held, and I'm really passionate about seeing an improved gender balance in these roles, because it's not only the right thing to do, but it also offers diversity of thinking and, as I will show you, financial outperformance to business. So it's a win-win. So there are many companies now really focused on making positive change. They're looking at their gender balance. They're looking at how to increase the percentage of females across functions, roles, and levels within their organization. 
And the consultancy firm McKinsey looked at data from 2019 and they concluded that companies in the top quartile of gender diversity for their executive teams were 25% more likely to experience above average profitability compared to their peer companies in the bottom quartile. So gender diversity is great for the bottom line. However, if businesses are looking to improve their gender diversity and they only focus on winning the battle for the best female talent in a diminishing or at best static pool, this simply drives up the price of that female talent or it can lead to poor quality recruitment decisions and potentially a selfish tick box approach to bringing females in to hit um, set targets. Caroline Brent, the founder of consultancy firm Humdex, who support a data-driven holistic approach to improving gender diversity, is very clear on the challenge that this poses. And she says, unless we change study patterns and attitudes to men's and women's work, we will only ever rob Peter or Pam to pay Paul or Pauline. She says we need a larger pool of female talent to recruit from. And also research by consultancy Corn Ferry, amongst others, has shown that it's all the more vital that we take action on gender diversity now. Their recent analysis shows that four times more women than men are leaving the workforce during this time of crisis and pandemic. And this is sparking concerns by experts that years of gender progression in business will be wiped out. So what can we do? What's the immediate difference that you can make as a business or an individual? How can you be a change maker? Well, I believe that a healthy, more productive, competitive and financially rewarding future workforce requires gender parity and must look beyond traditional talent quotas to solve this issue. So if you're working in a business, I'd recommend three steps. Firstly, know your internal gender split and not just on the board or the leadership team, but actually look by function, by level in the business and country if you're in multiple markets and know how this compares externally to those factors in your business sector. Secondly, Define targets that move your business towards gender balance, gender parity, and that get your business to the market average and perhaps even to be market leading again for your business sector. Thirdly, action change in your business's culture, types of roles, the attitudes and facilities. Look at anything that supports the achievement of the targets that you set and increases the female talent pool to fish from because we all have a responsibility to grow this female talent pool, not just selfishly fish for our own purposes. But more than anything, I want you to leave here today and have conversations of influence with young people, sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, free them from the limiting beliefs that certain jobs are more suited to men or more suited to women. Understanding your data, of course, is fundamental to making and measuring change in your business or organisation. But to inspire that change, please remember that little girl with her policeman's helmet. Remember how free thinking that she was at that very young age. Every day in every interaction, we can all help create a world where we have male and female talent in equal measure and we no longer define roles by gender. Thank you.